Prozac urns, hip-hop collages, and fiery eulogies. How do you salute the life of a legend? Whitney Houston exploded into pop music stardom in 1985 with her self-titled debut album. She would go on to have a memorable career, but it all came crashing down when she was found dead in her hotel room in 2012. Heart disease and cocaine usage were found to have contributed to her death. While Whitney's funeral drew all kinds of A-list talent, it was not without its issues. First, Aretha Franklin, who was supposed to both attend and perform, had to cancel. Franklin apologized in her statement, revealing that her absence came down to her own health problems. Then there was Bobby Brown, whose dramatic relationship with Whitney had played out in the tabloids. Reporters would have further cause to pry into their relationship even after she died, when Brown suddenly left before the service had started. He later gave his version of what happened, claiming he left out of frustration after security kept moving him on. Brown said, My children and I were invited to the funeral of my ex-wife Whitney Houston. We were seated by security and then subsequently asked to move on three separate occasions. Whitney Houston is buried at Fairview Cemetery in Westfield, New Jersey. Her epitaph reads, The Voice, and I Will Always Love You. George Michael dominated the 80s pop scene, first as one half of Wham! and then as a solo artist, winning Album of the Year at the 1987 Grammys for Faith. Michael died on Christmas Day in 2016 from heart and liver disease. He was 53. It would be three months before Michael's funeral took place. Fans had no idea it had happened at all, however, until his family released a statement saying that the service had already concluded. It read, George Michael's family would like to thank his fans across the world for their many messages of love and support. We ask that the family's wish for privacy be respected so that they can continue to live their lives privately, away from any media intrusion. After the way in which Michael was made into a punchline for much of his adult life, it's not surprising they would want privacy. George Michael is buried at Highgate Cemetery West in London, England. Leslie Nielsen, star of such 80s classics as Airplane and The Naked Gun, died in 2010, aged 84, after contracting pneumonia. While he wasn't always a comedy actor, he was probably best known for those roles and his superb talent for deadpan. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. His funeral embraced that completely. First of all, it was held at a Florida resort and entitled Cocktails with Leslie and Barbary, Barbary being the actor's widow. But Nielsen was a present host, laying in his open casket while the guests enjoyed drinks around him. One mourner said, the party was a celebration of his life. It was very respectful, but people seemed to enjoy it. Leslie Nielsen's good humor is reflected even at his final resting place at Evergreen Cemetery in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. There, a simple flat stone with a plaque reads, Let her rip. There's also a carved stone bench with the message, Sit down whenever you can. In an interview, Nielsen once said, That's my advice to actors. They say, Give me a tip. How do you go about acting? I say, Always sit down whenever you can. While he didn't live to see the end of the decade, the 1980s saw John Belushi hit the big time, most notably featuring on Saturday Night Live and starring in the Blues Brothers. In 1982, however, Belushi died of an overdose of cocaine and heroin. He was 33. Belushi's good friend and co-star Dan Aykroyd gave the eulogy at his funeral, although he almost acted more like a master of ceremonies. He told a story about a special memory with Belushi, telling guests, One day we were out driving, and I pulled out a tape of the Ventures playing a song and we both loved it and we agreed that whichever of us died first, the other would play it at the funeral and force everyone to listen to it, loud enough so that nobody could really enjoy it. He then pulled out a tape player, held it to the mic, and blasted the 2,000-pound bee throughout the church. John Belushi is buried at Abel Hill Cemetery in Chilmark, Massachusetts. The epitaph reads, Here lies buried the body of John Belushi. I may be gone, but rock and roll lives on. Corey Haim rose to prominence as a child star in the 80s after his starring role in The Lost Boys. Unfortunately, like many child stars, Haim failed to stay relevant as an adult and dealt with substance abuse issues. So when he died at the shockingly young age of 38 in 2010, people assumed that drugs must have been involved. But the autopsy showed no drugs in his system, and the cause of death was determined to be a combination of a heart problem and pneumonia. Despite 200 people attending the funeral, one who did not was frequent co-star Corey Feldman. He released a statement saying, in the days following my best friend Corey Haim's death, I have spent much time with his mother Judy, who has always been like a mother to me. I would love nothing more than to be by her side at Corey's funeral. However, due to their strong religious beliefs and need for privacy, the family has decided to make Corey's funeral on Tuesday a small private affair. He always had his talent, he always had his skill, and he always tried to be the best person he could. One mourner who was there said the service was very sad but with a lot of laughter. Corey Haim is buried at Pardis Shalom Cemetery in Ontario, Canada. His tombstone reads, You are a bright shining star that will live on for eternity. You will always be loved and forever be in our hearts. P. 
piece. Born Harris Glenn Milstead, Divine was the stage name he gave to his drag queen alter ego. He was most famous as a frequent collaborator of director John Waters. Sadly, less than two weeks after their film Hairspray was released in theaters, the actor was found dead in his room at LA's Hollywood Regency Plaza Hotel. He was 42. Despite the fact Milstead had seen a doctor just days earlier and been told he was healthy if overweight, his cause of death was determined to be an enlarged heart due to obesity. John Waters movingly eulogized his friend and collaborator, telling the funeral congregation, How many people at age 42 loved their job as much as he did? He was happy, talented, successful, and a true original. The director said Divine had come a long way from the desperately unhappy kid Waters had met when they were teenagers. People who had hassled him in high school were asking for his autograph. Harris Milstead is buried at Prospect Hill Park Cemetery in Towson, Maryland. While his tombstone is extremely traditional, it does offer a small nod to his most famous persona, with Divine written under his birth name. Eric Wright, aka Easy E, was a member of NWA in the 1980s, releasing such seminal rap albums as Straight Outta Compton. He died of complications from AIDS in 1995, aged just 30. At Easy es funeral, a manager from his record label eulogized, People will talk and say evil and vicious things, but your legacy will survive. Easy es cause of death was definitely on people's minds. One 17-year-old fan who was interviewed outside his funeral said, His death really scared me, but I hope it will make more young people think about what they are doing out there. Easy e is buried at Rose Hills Memorial Park in Whittier, California. His modest gravestone was replaced by a much flashier one in 2019, in honor of Easy es 55th birthday. It is covered by photos and reads, The godfather of gangster rap. He put Compton on the map. We loved him, but God loved him more. The man who created the new tombstone, known as Cemetery Tim, said, It was a lot of pressure. I want to represent Easy e the best I can. Being in the industry, I was like, if I ever got a chance to get to work on his stone, I'm going to give it my all. Carrie Fisher was a prolific actress and writer, but she will always be best known as Princess Leia in the Star Wars franchise. Fisher suffered a massive heart attack while on a flight in 2016 and died four days later. Her mother, actress Debbie Reynolds, would die the next day from a possible stroke after telling her son Todd, I miss her so much, I want to be with Carrie. I share everything with my dog. That's right. Especially the chick. Carrie was cremated and buried in a highly unconventional urn. As her brother Todd explained, Carrie's favorite possession was a giant Prozac pill that she bought many years ago and she loved it and it was in her house. Carrie would like that. It was her favorite thing. Carrie Fisher is interred in Forest Lawn Memorial Park in a grave shared with her mother. Estelle Getty only got into TV and film relatively late in life, not appearing on screen until 1978. In 1985, she was cast as Sophia Petrillo on the now iconic TV show The Golden Girls. Now, Ma, remember, don't do anything I wouldn't do. I think I crossed that line when I got a date. While Getty went on to have a thriving career outside of the show, it was her most well-known role by far. Getty died in 2008, aged 84, having suffered from advanced dementia for years. Getty had a small funeral, but there would have been room for three people who didn't attend. Her Golden Girls co-stars B. Arthur, Betty White, and Rue McClanahan. Getty's son said at the time, They would certainly have been welcome. I don't know why they wouldn't be attending Mom's funeral. Maybe it's a painful thing. If it was someone I'd been tight with like that and worked with all those years, I'd have been there. At least two of the women did not appreciate being called out like that, however. In response, Rue McClanahan issued a statement that read, I'd like them to know that I didn't attend the funeral because I can't fly right now with knee surgery. I don't know why Betty and B didn't go, maybe because they too have said their goodbyes to her when she was alive. Meanwhile, B. Arthur explained of Getty, She's been out of it so many years not recognizing anyone. It's a godsend. She's at peace. Estelle Getty is buried at Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Hollywood, California. Her large tombstone's epitaph reads, With love and laughter. Florence Griffith Joyner, affectionately known by her nickname Flojo, won two silver and three gold medals in the 100 and 200 meter races over two Olympic Games in the 1980s. But her medals and records came with suspicion of performance enhancing drug use. These rumors only intensified when she died in her sleep, aged just 38. However, no evidence of drug use was ever found. Joyner's funeral included some angry yelling about those who fueled the rumors Flojo was doping. Her former coach Bob Kersey addressed Flojo's young daughter in his fiery eulogy, saying, Mary, your mama wants you to know that those tarnishing poisonous lies can't hurt her no more, so you don't have to worry about that venomous, deadly scorpion sting of the reporters. It don't hurt her no more. See, God is protecting her. See, God is her coach now. Flojo's friend Carol Land continued the theme, saying, America has a trait of dishonoring people they had nothing to do with rising. If nobody else in America honors her, I can say we did today. She was a woman of virtue. Florence shined a light on America, and they didn't give her due. 
Florence Griffith Joyner is buried at El Toro Memorial Park in Lake Forest, California. Her flat tombstone has a full photo of the runner etched on it, as well as her nickname, and two messages inscribed by her husband, daughter, family, and friends. If you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.